And I believe there's a lot of people that that's just where you are. Mm -hmm. You know you have a call of God on your life, and you have been delaying the call of God. You've been disobeying the call of God, and you've been running from the call of God when you should be answering the call of God and also embracing the call of God because everything you need is locked up in mm -hmm. what God has assigned for you, which is better than what you have assigned for wow. yourself. And it says, because I've called and you've refused, then it tells you what kind of harvest. Now, mm -hmm. it does not take a rocket scientist to figure out that I don't want him laughing at my calamity and mocking when terror comes. Ooh. But there are people whose marriage is in calamity. Mm -hmm. Their careers are in calamity. Mm -hmm. Terror is coming and there's nothing they can do about it because they refuse the call of God. Wow. And so it's so important for us to say, you know what? If that's in the Bible, let me line my life up with what he said. And so we want to help you answer the call. I guess what I'm saying is that God doesn't want to go to voicemail. That's right. He wants us to answer the call. Right. Hello, what's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode. This is actually season number two, sweetheart. All right. And we're excited about it. We have another episode of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. And today we want to talk to you guys about understanding the call of God. There is a call of God on each one of our lives. Mm -hmm. And today we want to help you understand it, embrace it, and also lean into Ooh, it's it. Ooh, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good one. But for those of you who are new to our podcast, we just want to say welcome. Yeah. You know, we pray that you'll the people who find this podcast, mm -hmm. they actually know need it yeah. and want to grow in their relationship with God, their yeah. relationship with their spouses, their relationships with everyone around. Yeah. And so uh, we thank you for being a part of this today. Yeah. We pray that you're blessed. Yeah. You know, we have this saying that when you get better, the marriage gets better. And so our podcast is first and foremost a marriage relationship podcast, but it's not just that. It's also a personal growth podcast. And so there's married people, single people who yeah. tune in, people from around the world. And um, one of the things that we want to do is just to help marriages get better. We want to help a bad marriage get good, a good marriage get great, and a great marriage become out of this, out of world. this world. But what we found out after 24 years of marriage, ups and downs, is that great marriages don't just fall off of a tree. Mm -hmm. It takes intentionality, mm -hmm. and it also takes investment. Mm -hmm. And so we've created a product, and we believe it's just for you guys. It's called the Better Marriage Boot Camp, and we want to help whip your sh your marriage into shape. It's a 90-day journey with yours truly, Ken and Tabitha, <laughs> where we are your marriage mentor tours and we are your marriage coaches for 12 sessions and mm -hmm. we give you the very best of everything we've learned over 24 years and we really believe if you make this investment into your marriage there is no marriage that can't get better come on and so we've taken all of this experience real life experience mm -hmm. and we condensed it into yeah. this boot camp yeah. and we talk about all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Some of those things are uh, foundations, the laying a foundation for a healthy marriage. Mm -hmm. We talk about the art of communication. Mm -hmm. God knows we all need to learn to communicate better, yeah. no matter if you've been ma married five years, mm -hmm. 10 years, 20 yeah. years. Um, what else we talk about? Getting the romance back. Mm -hmm. That's always good. Yeah. And so there's so much information in yeah. here. I think it's going to be a blessing. Yeah. If you want more information about that, you can go to our website, KenandTabitha.com. There's a link in the show notes if you're on YouTube, and um, you can go check it out today, all right? Well, we're ready to get into today's uh, episode, and I know that this is going to be a blessing for many of you guys who are listening and watching on today. Today's episode is entitled Understanding the Call of God, mm. Understanding the Call of God. And let's just start right there. Sweetheart, um, what does the call mean to you? Well, the call. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's interesting, the call. I don't yeah. necessarily know if there is a call, uh -huh. but, you know, several calls. But I think of a call as an assignment okay. from God. Yeah. So like anything that God assigns you to do, uh -huh. um, that is the call. Okay. That is a call. Okay. Do you feel like the call of God on your life or the calls of God on your life mm -hmm. um, is important to you? And if so, why? Um, absolutely. So uh -huh. if I were to say, define one main call, that would be my call into mm -hmm. salvation, okay. my call into the body of Christ. Okay. okay. That's everyone's call. Right. But within that call, uh -huh. there are other calls. There are other assignments, right? And so my assignment would be, um, you uh -huh. know, a wife, uh -huh. you know, I, that's, that's a call. One right. of my calls is to be a wife. Yeah. One of my calls is to be a mother. Uh -huh. One of my calls is to be a pastor. And so uh -huh. it's very important that I know the call because of this. Mm -hmm. So maybe instead of being a pastor, I wanted to be a scientist. Uh -huh. 
uh, the call was to be a pastor, not a scientist. Right. So that's why it's important. I need to know what God's called and mm -hmm. what God has assigned me to do. Why would you say that that's important for other people? Because there's so many people, they don't know what their call is or mm -hmm. what their callings are. Why would you say that that's important for other people to know? Um, I think it's important because, you know, number one, not everyone's called into fivefold ministry, uh -huh. okay? And so as believers, we do have people who are school teachers and scientists and doctors and lawyers, uh -huh. and some people go feeling maybe unfulfilled because uh -huh. they feel like, well, I'm not called of God uh -huh. because I don't work in the church full time. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're not called. Okay. Um, God could have called mm. you to do, you know, to be that doctor, that scientist or whatever, but you are a Christian. Um, God is using you in your field, yeah. whatever you're doing. Yeah. You're praying for people. He's right. giving you the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Yeah. You can be a spiritual being in yeah. whatever profession yeah. God's called you to do. Yeah. yeah. If I was to answer that, I would say without us knowing what God's called us to do, we probably won't be fulfilled. Yeah. And I don't want to just be a millionaire. I want to be a fulfillionaire. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people that aren't fulfilled in life because there's a hole in their soul that only Jesus can fill or only the direction of God, the assignments mm -hmm. of God and the call of God can fulfill. And so when we're talking about callings today, we're not just talking about, like you said, fivefold ministry gifts, which maybe we'll break that down a little bit later. We're not talking about just the calling to preach or something like that. Yes. We believe that as a Christian, we're to live on call. Mm -hmm. um, has there ever been a time in your life where there has been a call that came in to your cell phone and you sent it to voicemail? Like you saw it coming in? And you send it. To, okay, who was that? Um, I'm just playing. Don't answer that. <laughs> a lot. I mean, you know, every if you're in a meeting, you can't take the call. Like yeah. it's go, voicemail. Go to voicemail. Yeah. So why do you think um, people? And I and I, I would. My assumption is that we've all done that. Mm -hmm. We've all had a call that came in that we decided not to take it right now, but to send it into voicemail. Yeah. Why have you done that before? <laughs> Probably all kinds of reasons. Uh -huh. Number one, you know, I'm taking a nap. I don't want to answer the call. Um, I'm in a meeting or, you know, I just don't want to answer it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I came up with three reasons of why people send their calls to voicemail. Check these out. Number one is that they're too busy doing something else to answer the call right now. Mm -hmm. They're too busy doing something else, whether they're working out, whether they're making food, whether they're Ooh. taking a shower, they're too busy doing something else. But when a call comes in from God, we can't be too busy with our careers, taking wow. care of our children, building what we want to build that mm -hmm. we don't answer the call. Mm -hmm. And so here's the revelation. God doesn't want to go to voicemail. And so when he calls us, it's important for us to pick up the call. Mm -hmm. Number two, the, the second reason people send calls to voicemail is that they don't feel like answering the call right now. So they say, I'll get to it later, quotation marks. And so this is procrastination. This is like, OK, I don't feel like it right now. You ever had that person yes. that calls you and you're like, I don't want to talk to them right now. <laughs> I don't feel like getting into it right now. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. But unfortunately, that's how some people treat the call of God on their life. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll answer that call in my 50s. I'll answer that call Ooh. in my 60s. I'll answer that call later on in life. But the call of God isn't supposed to be delayed. It's supposed to be answered right wow. away because he knows what we need mm -hmm. more than we know what we need. Wow. And the third reason, people send calls to voicemail is that they didn't see the call coming in and they miss it all together. That, that might be the worst one. Yeah. yeah. That's when you come to your cell phone and you're like, oh, this is the worst. When you get a voicemail mm -hmm. and you're like, well, there's no call that came in at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Two days later, you get a voicemail mm -hmm. and it's somebody that you wanted to pick up for, but you completely missed the call. Right. Or you just missed the call and you were out doing something different. And that's how some people even treat the call of God. Mm. They, they don't just miss his call. They don't even know there Yikes. is a call. That yeah. one speaks to me so much because I miss... Eight out of ten calls. <laughs> you missed nine out of ten. Tell the I truth. need to repent. Like, yeah, I'm just like, oh Lord, forgive me. Listen, what am I missing? I had a lady who we would love to be in relationship with. They're another <laughs> pastoral couple, and they have a great ministry. They do a great work. And um, she reached out to me on Instagram and was really just like, man, I just love you guys so much. I would love to connect with you. And I said, OK, well, well, you know, Tabitha, she's oh not the best goodness. at returning calls or anything. So here's her number. OK. And if you don't get in through to her, I want you to reach back out to me. Sure enough, a month later, I get a call like, man, I've reached out to your wife numerous times. I went to her. She had no clue. <laughs> 
that this lady had left us a message and was trying to get in touch with her. And so I said, hey, don't feel bad about it. She doesn't even return my See, call. See, I've got a new friend and don't even know it. <laughs> I haven't even, <laughs> you know. But here's the deal. It's not her heart. Right, yeah. right. And I actually in, I've learned to enjoy that about you mm -hmm. is that you live with a carefreeness mm -hmm. and you are real serious about what you need to be serious about. Yeah. Your assignment in the church, taking care of me as a husband, mm -hmm. taking care of my kids mm -hmm. and everything else. I think there's a lot of people that they give so much attention to so many things that are minorities right. and not majority. So many right. things that are not the main thing, but they're minor things. Absolutely. And they're stressed out over all these minor things. Well, sometimes, and it's a thing, you know, sometimes the thing that you're great at uh -huh. can also be your greatest weakness as well. Yeah. So I'm really good at like when I'm here uh -huh. in the room, I'm really great at being in the moment. Yeah. I mean, we will have a fantastic time. Uh -huh. We will minister. We will see the power of God move. But I'm really bad at like, I'm so great at being in the moment. I'm bad at taking pictures and capturing the moment, you know, for other times. Uh -huh. But I've done um, things like that. You know, what I've learned is that... <laughs> I used to get so angry with myself and frustrated with myself, like, oh, why can't you return phone calls? Oh, why can't you, you know, and I would just be so bad, you know, so down on myself. But I, I mean, yes, I try to get better, mm -hmm. but I just give myself some grace, like, okay, I'm so good at this area. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not my strength. And it's like, okay, I'll get to the call when I get to. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. um, I think, I don't know. I think we should no. all give ourselves a little yeah, I like it. I mean, grace it, it, every yeah, once it's in a good. while. It's good. And so I don't know. Um, I think that a lot of people miss calls and they send it to voicemail. And I believe that there's just people who are watching this and listening to this today that you have a call of God on your mm -hmm. life, but you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. You might just be going to school. You might be building a business. You might be building a family. And, and until you say, you know what, I'm called to do what I do, then you're going to miss the grace, the anointing, or the empowerment of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to help you do what he has called you to do. Wow. Okay. And so tell me what you think about this statement. Answering the call of God leads to fulfillment. What do you think about that? Um, I I think yeah, absolutely. Some well, in reference to what you just said about the reasons why we don't answer the call because uh -huh. we're you know busy or we don't know that we had to call at all. I think it's um, sometimes we can feel like, well, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And the call of God is an interruption of what we're currently doing mm. or will a, be a delay in what our goals are. And we see it as okay. a negative thing. Okay. But we have to understand that the call uh -huh. is a benefit, yeah. that God works with us. He's right. never working against us, but uh -huh. he's always working for us. Okay. And when we receive the call, it's right. to, okay, it might delay your plans, but eventually, uh -huh. you know what I mean? It, the scripture says that God will do exceedingly abundantly beyond all uh -huh. that we can ask, think, or even imagine. Okay. And so, okay, you might put your thing on hold, but uh -huh. God's going to do exceedingly abundantly. What I hear is that his plans are always greater than yes. our plans. And so we're always going to have plans, but the scripture says it this way. It says that man plans, mm -hmm. but it's God that directs our path. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, you have a plan, and we should plan. Right. We should have a great plan, but we should always submit that plan to God's plan. Absolutely. Meaning that I'm going to hold my plan loosely because it, I think what we're talking about is faith in God. Mm -hmm. I think what we're talking about is trusting God more than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think it's hard for some people to do that because they really don't want to let go and let God yeah. because they feel like if they can control it, they can get their life to where they want it. But really, that's how many people bankrupt their life is because they're in control instead of giving up to the control to the one who's really in control. Mm. You understand what I mean? I, yeah. I think a lot of people don't mm. answer a call of, mm -hmm. from God because mm -hmm. um, they think that it's some big, huge thing right. that like, oh, my gosh, I have a call from God. You yeah. know, my whole life is over. I have to sell <laughs> everything that I have. I have right. to move to a new country. Right. I have to go do change my complete, you know, change my life. Right. And typically that's not it. I mean, yeah, you have those road to Damascus moments like, you know, that uh, when, when God spoke to Paul. Um, but, you know, most of the time as, you know, in our lives, that's not it. Yeah. And so most of the time, I think a call in your average believer is going to be like, okay, start going to church on Sunday, every Sunday. Right. Okay, join a serve team, start serving, right. volunteer at your church. Right. 
okay, the next thing is, okay, start giving to, like, tithe to the church. Trust God with your money. Yeah. Like, they're calls all to do little callings. things. Put your kids in, you know, into church. Yeah. Those are all, like, calls so and steps toward if, what if, God's called If we got you. really practical today, how would you define the call of God? Or how would you define a call? I would define a call did as... Did I already ask you that? You did. You, said as you an did, like I said, as an I'm assignment. Uh-huh. Whatever God has assigned you to do, okay. that's what you're going to do. And it not necessarily changes, but uh-huh. okay, God has assigned me to be a part of the church, right? I am okay. a member in the body of Christ in a local church right. I'm serving. That is a call. Right. Now, okay, I've done that. What else, you know, what are you saying next, God? I have three definitions that I would unfold or a three-part definition. It is the process by which the Father draws a person to himself. That's Mm. a call, okay? That's beautiful. The Holy Spirit reveals to us our sinful nature. The Holy Spirit reveals to us our need for Jesus. The Holy Spirit reveals to us that he paid um, all of our sin upon a cross and took all of our penalty upon his his body. And um, then he calls us to himself. And so that is a call, the call Mm -hmm. to salvation, the call to the lordship of Jesus, the call to be a child of God. Those are all calls. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is a call. So the first call and there's eight billion people or so in the world. I mean, that number is growing all the time, it seems like. But we all have a call to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter your religion right now, your belief system or your background. Um, There's a lot of different things that the enemy calls you to, to distract you from this one call, but we are all called to Jesus. Mm. And so is there anything on that that you would like to add to that Uh, definition? No, I I think that's great. So it's the process by which the Father draws us to himself, so we're called to Jesus. Here's the second definition. To be chosen by God to fulfill a specific role or an office in the church, Mm -hmm. okay? So Ephesians chapter 4 speaks of the fivefold ministry gifts Mm -hmm. that you alluded to earlier. And what are they? They are... The fivefold ministry gifts, Ephesians 4, is apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so the scripture says that we've been given these fivefold ministry gifts. Jesus descended to the lower parts of the earth, and he also ascended, and he gave gifts to men. Mm-hmm. All right? And so these offices or fivefold mantles or fivefold anointings is actually the mantles of Jesus himself. So Jesus was the apostle. He was the prophet. He was an evangelist. He was a pastor. He was a teacher. Now, when he gives gifts to man, he calls men or women to fulfill those offices on his behalf. I always like to say it this way. So if you come to me and you say, hey, Ken, how's everything going? That's cool. Okay, my name is Ken. We can go play basketball. We can go bowling together. You will access the natural part of me. We can hang out and be friends. But when you say Pastor Ken, you are now summonsing summonsing (laughs) the mantle or anointing of Christ himself to meet your needs as as an under-shepherd. So you say Pastor Ken. So I'm calling for the anointing of Jesus on the inside of you to meet my needs as to pastor me. To, yeah. to, I'm, I'm accessing something that's supernatural, okay? Mm-hmm. And so the thing about these five-foot ministry gifts is that we don't call ourselves into these. Mm-hmm. And this calling is not for everybody. Mm-hmm. This calling is God is selecting certain people for these offices. It's not because they're better. It's just because right. he's calling certain. And so when you have a call to a five-foot ministry office, which I believe is the New Testament governing arm of the church, it's to help mature the saints and to bring us all into the unity of, of the faith. And our mm-hmm. job as ministry gifts is to equip people. This calling, right, this calling that we receive is something that we can't step into. All we can do is say, yes, I accept that mm-hmm. calling. And then there needs to be a training. There needs to be an ordaining. And then there needs to be a release to fulfill that calling. Mm-hmm. It's not like you get to wake up tomorrow and say, I had this dream that I'm called to be an apostle or a prophet or a pastor or a teacher. And you know what? I'm just going to go out and do it. Yes, you go out and do the function. But if you want to be ordained and established in that office, you need someone who is already in that office to train you, ordain you, and release you. Mm. That is a bona fide call of God. That's good. Mm-hmm. Anything I else love it. That? I love it that you, you know, just the differences between the first definition that you gave. Everyone's which, called. Yeah, everyone's mm-hmm. called. Yeah. And then there is, you know, that that fivefold ministry. I think a lot of people um, misunderstand and they think the fivefold ministry is the call. Like right. I'm not called because I'm not called to be a pastor. That's just or, one aspect of the call. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And that's very important to yeah. know because we are all called right. to ministry. Yeah. We are all called to prophesy, yeah. to lay hands on the sick and see people healed. Mm-hmm. We are all called to pray. Right. And so my third definition is, is God's leading us to go somewhere or do something. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And I believe, once again, this is a calling that's for all of us. Yeah. So yeah. the first and the third one is a calling for everybody. Uh -huh. God's leading for us to go somewhere or to do something. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is when you can sense God's asking you to go somewhere. You're in the grocery store and you can just sense the Holy Spirit Ooh. saying, hey, go talk to that person. Mm -hmm. That's a call. OK, mm -hmm. when you um, are just minding your own business in prayer and the Lord says you need to call somebody and forgive them, just mm -hmm. let them know that it's OK. OK, that's a call. Yeah. It is God leading us to go somewhere or do something. OK, that's when you might be in this career and the Lord says, no, I want you to do this career. Yeah. It's a calling to leave this and start that. Mm -hmm. All right. It's it, all of those are callings. And so um, I would this is what I would want people to know is that the commands of God are also calls of God. Mm -hmm. The commands of God. So everything that's in the Bible that says we should do this is not just a commandment. It's a, also a calling. Yes. And so that's when you say that to tithe is a calling, to go to church is a calling, mm -hmm. to serve, to turn the other cheek is a mm -hmm. calling, to humble yourself is a calling, to serve. You know, all of those things are yeah. not just commandments. They're also callings. Yeah. I love that. All right. Anything mm -hmm. else on that? No, it makes me, I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's not just one thing that you're called to do. It's multiple things that you're called to do. And so when we talk about the calls, it's not just I'm called. It's I have calls of God. Yep. It's not just the call of God, like singular. It's calls from God. OK, it's our ability to obey his word. All right. And so I want to go over a few scriptures that kind of jump out to me and see what jumps out to you um, concerning the call of God. All right. Now, Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. And I just hear this for some reason that it, why is this podcast so important? Why is this revelation so important? Because there are so many people that don't live on call. And if we don't live on call, we will not be fulfilled, number one, or accomplishing what God wants us to accomplish in mm -hmm. our generation. So it's important that we seek after the call, mm -hmm. that we go after the call, and that we live on call. Mm -hmm. I could almost also say it's almost like living by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because if you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading, that's also you living on call. Right. So Amen. Jeremiah 1.5, tell me what you get out of this. Okay. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Pop, um, pop, um, what is it? What, uh, popular scripture there. What, what jumps out to you? Um, before I formed you. Uh, I think it just is telling us that God has a plan for our lives before he formed us, before we, he created us. He had a plan for us. Yeah. You know, so it's almost like, you know, I... Um, um, and, and I'm an artist. Okay. Uh -huh. I went to art school, things like that. And like just recently I did a painting uh -huh. and I had this idea of what I wanted to paint before I actually painted it. Uh -huh. I had the paint, I had all of the tools, I had all the supplies, I had everything I needed. And then I went ahead and painted mm -hmm. what I had this image of and what I planned for and it came out the way I wanted it. Mm -hmm. And I think God as being our artist, the one who created yeah. us, he has this idea, mm -hmm. this perfect image of exactly how he wants us to be. Yeah. But he goes further than that. Mm -hmm. He has the details of our lives mm -hmm. planned out. He yeah. has, you know, um, safety grails in our lives yeah. planned out. He has angels assigned to us. Yeah. And so it just is when we talk about a call on our lives, um, as we are searching for what God wants us to do, uh -huh. it makes me feel safe uh -huh. and it makes me want to trust in God, mm -hmm. even though, oh, I don't know, God, you know, because I, I, I wanted to do this. No, I know that I can trust in God because yeah. he has a master plan for me. Yeah. Well, people will say, well, that is a scripture about Jeremiah. But the principle is not just about Jeremiah. Yeah. The principle applies to all of us today. So the principle is that before you were formed in your mother's womb, right. he knew you and he had a plan for mm -hmm. you. Before your mom and dad had a plan for you, God had a plan for mm -hmm. you. Before you had a plan for you, before you had your goals right. written out, your five and 10 year goals, God already had a plan for you. And so the principle is that when you were a fetus or before you were even being formed in your womb, you were in the mind and the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And so he's already laid out a track and a purpose and a plan for us. That's exciting news for me. That means that none of us are here by an accident right. or by a cosmic explosion or by some kind of just uh, just luck that happened or happenstance. Mm -hmm. We've been been created by an intelligent creator. Yeah. You know, it speaks to, you know, in, in these days, mm -hmm. you know, so many people deal with depression. So right. many people deal with thoughts of suicide and anxiety. And it's really the enemy's attack against who we are, yeah. against our purpose, against our call. Right. And we can, un if we can understand yeah. as these negative thoughts, these self-condemning thoughts right. come in that no, we 
have been created by God, yeah. intentionally created by God. He knew us be, we, before we were formed in our mother's womb. Mm-hmm. It will erase away those condom, those thoughts of condemnation. Yeah. It'll give us um, thoughts of hope mm-hmm. and um, just security and peace about our future. Like, mm-hmm. no, I'm I'm intentional. Like, I'm supposed God has a plan for me. Mm-hmm. Let me move on with this plan that God has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we want to help people find that. Absolutely. Yeah. Proverbs one twenty four. Tell me what you get out of this one. It says, "Because I've called and you've refused, I've stretched out my hand and no one regarded. Because you disdained all of my counsel and would have none of my rebuke, I will also laugh at your calamity. Mm-hmm. I will mock when terror comes. Um, ter- when terror comes. Um, anything stick out to you from that one? I mean, yikes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't want to, you know, don't well, want to be the people that he's yeah, talking yeah, to. Yeah, don't want to be out. that person. Yeah, because to me, it makes it feel like okay, there are bad things happening to some people. Uh-huh. Let me read the Bible to figure out how to stay out of that group. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I think there are, you know. Um, consequences to our actions. And, you know, we have three kids and just like with our children and just even like today, like if you speed, you could get a ticket and, you know, face a fine. You could have your license taken from you. Like there are consequences. And I think God has spoken laws into the earth. Like if you jump off of a cliff, you're going to go down. <laughs> if it's too high, you're going to get hurt. That is the law of gravity. That law is there. So mm-hmm. God is telling us, hey, there's some things mm-hmm. that if you do this, mm-hmm. these are the consequences and that you're going to get. And it nothing to do with him not being a God of love or grace or mercy. There's another law that's at work. I and set if you sow, you're going to yep. reap. God mm-hmm. said, I set before you life, life and, and death, death yeah. blessings and cursings. Choose life. Yeah, you choose. And so um, I think that's what it's talking about here, but it's making me want to say, hey, let me be aware yeah. to obey the commandments of God. Yeah. And obeying the commandments of God is obeying the call of God yeah. Yeah. and the voice of God, yeah. even every day when mm-hmm. God says, hey, I need you to spend five extra minutes in prayer with me today mm-hmm. because there's something that I need you to handle in the earth for me. That's being obedient to the voice of God, the command of God, the call of God. I don't know about you. I just love the word. I just feel like you can get so much value, empowerment, and perspective from the word of God. I mean, just a simple passage, Proverbs 124, because I've called Mm -hmm. and you refused. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's a lot of people that that's just where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a call of God on your life and you have been delaying the call of God. You've been disobeying the call of God and you've been running from the call of God when you should be answering the call of God. God and also embracing the call of God because everything you need is locked up in mm-hmm. what God has assigned for you, which is better than what you have assigned for wow. yourself. And it says, because I've called and you refused, then it tells you what kind of harvest. Now, mm-hmm. it does not take a rocket scientist to figure out that I don't want him laughing at my calamity and mocking when terror comes. Ooh. But there are people whose marriage is in calamity, mm-hmm. their careers are are in calamity. Mm -hmm. Terror is coming and there's nothing they can do about it because they refuse the call of God. Wow! And so it's so important for us to say, you know what, if that's in the Bible, let me line my life up with what he said. And so we want to help you answer the call. I guess what I'm saying is that God doesn't want to go to voicemail. That's right. He wants us to answer the call. Right. And I hear this too. If you are currently frustrated in life, maybe there's some like things. It's just like kind of you feel like I can't do anything right right now. Like, you know, this is happening wrong and that's happening wrong. And Uh I thought that this was going to work out, but that didn't work out. Maybe stop, ask yourself in the presence of God, Uh am I doing what God's called me to do? Yeah. Am I answering yeah. God's call or am I yeah. continually letting him go to voicemail? Yeah. And I would say also, don't even look at this as some big call. I cannot reiterate this enough because many times people are stressed out. Like, I just don't know, especially like younger people, millennials and Z's. Are, I don't yeah. know what I'm called to do. It's like this big thing. I don't know if I'm called to live on missions or start this mega church and this mega organization. No, it's just like, it's not some big call. It's these every little day, every place calls mm-hmm. that you get to live. Mm-hmm. I mean, did you pray today? Were you kind today? Yeah. Did you did you forgive someone today? Did, did you serve someone today? Did you take care of the poor? Did you lead a group? Did you make a disciple today? Yeah. Did you did you did you grow in your relationship with God? Did you worship today? Or did you did you have time in his presence today? Absolutely. It's all so for me right now, like I have this call that I'm doing, like we're podcasters and authors and pastors and things like that. But honestly, it's really not about the big call. Like I'm also called to be a great husband. Yeah. I'm called to be a better husband. Like yeah. this is a year that I want to love my wife more. In fact, if you can't 
be faithful to that call to be a husband, all the rest of that stuff. Yeah. It's a lot of people last. want the big calls, but they're not faithful over right. the steward, uh, steward every the everyday little bitty calls. Like, mm -hmm. I'm called to be a husband. I want to love you better this year. I'm called to be a better father, mm -hmm. to be more patient with my kids, to speak life over my children. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm called to so many different things. Yeah. But I think we're all looking for purpose and we're looking to be fulfilled, like you said. Yeah. I think God has placed on the inside of us the need and the desire to be a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. Yeah. And like you said, millennials or, you know, oftentimes, and I've been there too, I wanted to be a part of something that's going to change the world and it's going to be crazy and amazing. It's going to do great things. But often, and for most of us, uh -huh. we are going, that's, that's like, and that's something that we're a part of. We're not going to lead it. You yeah. know, we're not going to be the one, the, yeah. the Billy Graham, the, yeah. the Joyce Meyer. Yeah. You know, we're not going to be that one, yeah. but we are going to be a part of it. It's, you know, we're a part of something right. that is bigger than ourselves. And I think we need to put an honor on mm -hmm. that small part mm -hmm. because the Billy Graham and the Joyce Myers, you don't even know the price that you would have to pay for that. Yeah. A lot of people want that glory, but they have no idea of the story. Yeah. You know, I heard Joyce Meyer say one time that she was, um, raped by her father over a hundred times. Mm. And like years later, yes, she has an anointing for significant breakthrough and Bible revelation and understanding. And I'm not saying that you have to go through that to get that. But what I'm saying right. is that that is actually what made her what she is today. Mm. And I think many people, they see these big names and they're like, oh, I want to do this and I'm called to do that. They have no clue of the price mm -hmm. that has been paid for that calling. Mm -hmm. And so instead of aspiring, and if that's what God's called you to do, we're, we're your biggest cheerleaders. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is that I think we need to put more honor on the everyday little thing. Yeah. Are you a person of your word? Are you called to be right. a trustworthy person? Are you called? Are you a timely person? Are mm -hmm. you? Can you be called to be trustworthy? with just being an usher, but be trusted with the things that are unseen. Because if you're faithful of the unseen, then God will do some things for you in the scene. Absolutely. And so I think all of those things are called. You know, one scripture that I, that I get, and I know, I don't know if I even have time to read the whole thing. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. It's about Samuel. Okay. Remember Samuel's call? Mm-hmm. First Samuel chapter three, listen to this. It says, Ooh, the boy yeah. Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. And in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. And we don't want that to be in our generation. Mm -hmm. We don't want the word of the Lord or the prophetic insight to be rare. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, God is still speaking and moving. It says that one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. And the Lord called Samuel. Mm. And Samuel answered, and he says, here I am. And he ran to Eli and he says, here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and he lied down. And again, the Lord called Samuel and Samuel got up and he went to Eli and said, here I am. Mm. Did you call me? My son, Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. OK, and I believe there's some of you all who are watching this and you don't yet know the Lord. You don't yet know the Lord. You are about to know the Lord. And just like God was calling Samuel, God is also calling you into a relationship mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. It says the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Samuel goes on to become one of the greatest prophets in the Bible, but this is the beginning of his call. And the third time the Lord called Samuel and Samuel got up and he went to Eli and said, here I am. Did you call me? This is three times, right? Mm. And then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. Mm. So Eli told Samuel, go lie down and if he calls you, speak and say, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel, he went and he lied down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak mm. for your servant is listening. Can we just highlight wow. that for a moment? So the posture of the person who hears from God and answers the call of God, it's not like you have to say, I know all of the Bible speak. Um, or I'm a perfect person, speak, mm -hmm. or I've been in, in Bible study this many years, speak. Yeah. -uh. He was a boy. He, he didn't did even, not yet know God. He didn't even know God. He just had a posture to yeah. say, speak for your servant is listening. So good. I believe that's a word for somebody who's watching this right now, that God's not looking for perfection. He's just looking for somebody with the right posture, Absolutely. not perfection, but the right posture Absolutely. to say, God, speak your servants. Listen. And I think also what we are, what's highlighted here is that, you know, some of you that are listening right now, mm -hmm. God has been calling you but you didn't know yeah. it was the voice of God. Yeah. But today yeah. we're telling you that's the voice of God. Yeah. Just go back 
and say, God, yeah. what is it? Yeah. What do you have for you, for and me? It's, and it's going to require faith mm -hmm. for you to hear the still small voice of God, to know the whisper of the Lord or the nudging of God. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always learned that the Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. Many times he's not putting out a big sign and say, hey, this is what you have to do. There's just a nudge. There's just a little peace. Mm -hmm. There's just a little divine connection. What is he doing? He's bringing you over into mm -hmm. your God assignment. And that's where fulfillment actually is. But when I read this story, there's so much that jumps out to mm. me. Um, w w is there anything else that jumps out to you? It's kind of like for me, it's how God would choose people before we even choose him. Yeah. God would have a plan for us before we even know him. And then God would, would pick, he would hand tap someone. Now, if you go deep with the story, mm -hmm. Samuel, of course, was the son of Hannah. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in the beginning of Samuel that there was a woman named Hannah that was um, she was barren. She couldn't have child. And so there was times where she would come to the temple and she would just be praying and praying and praying after years of being barren. One day, the priest of the house named Eli saw her lips was moving. He thought she was drunk, but it wasn't that she was drunk. She had been praying to God for a child mm -hmm. for so long that her lips was moving, but no words were coming out. When Eli finally realized that the woman wasn't drunk, he said, ask what you want. And so she asked and was like, listen, I don't have a child. And, I, and he was like, listen, um, God's going to give you your request. And I love it that God will give us our request. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what the doctor might say. We know mm -hmm. a doctor that has never lost a patient. Mm -hmm. And um, by that time next year, she had given birth to Samuel. Mm -hmm. But the covenant that she made with God, she said, God, if you give me a son, I will dedicate him to the house yes. of the Lord. She brought Samuel back to Eli, the high priest, after she had weaned him at two years old, and she left Eli at church. Now, mm. we don't want people doing that. Keep your babies. We <laughs> like kids' church. You go home after a couple hours. She left a two-year-old or so in the house of God, and he was raised in the things of God by the priest named Eli. Mm -hmm. And so as, as, he, as time goes on and he's being raised in the house of the Lord, I mean, all this will preach, his the, the, the boys being raised in the house of the Lord. See, people of God, you got to raise your kids in the house of the Lord, around the things of God, mm -hmm. around other mm -hmm. men and women of God. This call came, and he was in a position to say, here I am, Lord, mm -hmm. speak, mm -hmm. for your servant is listening. Anything else jumps out to you? Um, no, I think that's beautiful. And, you know, just as I remember our son, Kenny, when he was young, maybe three or four years old, um, he uh, came out and he was just like, yes, mommy, yes. And, I, and it was just a similar thing. Yeah. And I said, you know, I'm not, I don't want you, you know, it's, it's okay. And then he went back and it was maybe a third time. And I, re I remembered this story of Samuel yeah. and I was just like, did you hear somebody say your name? And he said, yes. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, I didn't say your name. Yeah. That was the Lord speaking to you. Uh -huh. Go back in the bed and ask God what he wants. And I don't remember like exactly what came out of it, but I keep reminding him even now he's 12 years old now, but I keep reminding him, you remember the time the Lord called your name and he remembers, yeah, he, he says, remembers. yes, he, he remembers. remembers. And I'm just believing that <laughs> yeah. there's a, you know, God is going to speak something, yeah. you know, and uh, drop something in his spirit about yeah. that still. Yeah. But I just love stories like this yeah. because even in our son, we've taught this to our kids and they know I'm listening for yeah. the call of God. Yeah, so good. So I want to give them five keys to embracing your mm -hmm. call for those of you all who are taking notes or you just kind of want to grab hold of some mm -hmm. keys, like some next steps. Here's some five things to embracing your call. Mm -hmm. And our hope with today's podcast is that you will stop running from the call, disobeying the call, delaying the call, procrastinating the call. I think I know too many people who are doing that. Do yeah. you know, like you're running from the call, like where are you going to run to? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to run mm -hmm. to? You can't run from God, okay? So stop running from the call. It's time for you to embrace the call. Mm -hmm. So here's five keys. Number one, you got to ask God to show you your calling, okay? So for those of you all who say, God, what have you called me to do? Why don't you just take a moment and seek him, okay? Um, uh, years ago, before I was a pastor, um, I was serving in a church, and I felt a call in my life, but mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what it was. I knew I was called to pastor, but I didn't know when and where. Yeah. And it was a, a woman that I was doing some real estate um, business with, and she says, hey, Kim, what are you going to do in the church? What, what's God calling you to do? And I, I wasn't comfortable like answering the question because I knew in my heart God was calling me to do something, but I had not taken time yet to seek him about mm. it. And when she said that, 
I took 40 days and I decided to do to pray and fast for 40 days to seek God concerning my calling. Yeah. And right around the 20, and I wasn't doing like all water or anything. I was doing fruits and vegetables, six to six fast, Daniel fast over those 40 days. But right in the middle of the fast, the Lord says, I've called you to be a pastor. And wow. I said, where? He says, in Gainesville, Florida. And I said, where? He said, Gainesville. I had to Google it to figure out where it was. And all of that came because there was a lady who asked me a question about my call. Wow. But then I went and sought God for my calling. Wow. And so that's step number one. That's really good. Um, I think I received my calling. Well, I, I had a couple of times that God spoke to me. First, um, he spoke to me um, and said that he told me I was going to take a job to be a teacher. This is before we even got into ministry. Uh -huh. uh, we were new believers. I don't even know if I knew that much of the word. I didn't know anything. We were still struggling in our marriage. Yeah. Um, and I was about to go take a job um, as a high school art teacher. Uh -huh. And it was part of my dream. I wanted to teach kids because I'm from the hood and I wanted to teach kids kids that they can have a better life. And it was like, I was passionate about it, you know? And, um, the day before I was about to go take this teaching position, uh, God spoke to me while I was walking and said, don't take the position, stay home, help Ken. And this is going to help him build the family business, which was real estate. And I started crying because <laughs> I was like, but that's my dream. This is what I want to do. Oh, wow. And in the midst of that, God said, don't worry. One day you'll teach my kids. Uh -huh. I was clueless. I had no idea. Uh -huh. that that was God calling me to be a teacher, that he had just spoke to my heart. <sighs> he just spoke to my heart that moment that uh -huh. I would teach uh -huh. his kids. So um, part of my gift is to be a teacher, is uh -huh. to teach fivefold ministry. Uh -huh. But then later on, after we, went, we we joined a church, we were going through ministry school, um, I had a dream. I don't even know if we were really in church back then. I mean, back at, at the, talk, in and out at the of call to teacher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, well, we were going to church. We were we were struggling. Yeah, we were. Um, that's how you know, powerful the call yeah, is. Yeah, we were going to church, but that's how <laughs> powerful the call is. Ooh, yeah, and I see so much in this. Yeah, because it so it's good, also right? with calling, you got to make sure that you're called to the church that you're part of. Yeah, because if you know that you're called to a church, well, then you're not easily swayed or mm -hmm. offended or leaving the church either. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people jump from church to church because they don't know where they're called to. Mm -hmm. And there is a bunch of great churches, but there's a difference between great churches and your church. Yeah. You need to find out where your church is, where your oil is, mm. the brook that you're supposed to drink from, the family that you're supposed to be Absolutely. a part of. And don't be so easily moved from what God called you to because he places the members in the body as it pleases mm -hmm. him. I say it this way. He calls you to the places that he wants you to plant in mm. for specific reasons. But anyway, what a great story about your calling. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's one call, and then you had other dreams and yes, things, and we yes, won't get yes. into those right now. But you got to ask God to show you your calling. Number mm -hmm. two, you got to invite God into every situation and season, okay? God can speak into your spiritual life, but maybe not your business life. Or God can mm -hmm. speak into your business life, but maybe not your, you know, you want to ask God to speak into my business Mm -hmm. Calling, speaking to my educational calling, speaking to my familiar calling, speaking to my right. speaking to every. Well, area. It can be easy to think that oh well, God's only concerned with those spiritual th like you know with with church and right. maybe my family or whatever. But no, God wants to be involved in your business. Yeah. He wants to be involved in when you go play basketball yeah. on the weekends. Yeah. He wants to be involved in your you know when you take kids to soccer practice. But he has like, to be invited in. Yes. Yeah. Number three would be live life with a sensitivity to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, this one kind of goes in combo with the number two yeah. of inviting him in. Yeah. But sometimes in order to be sensitive to God, we really have to starve our flesh and, be, and feed our spirit. And that's why I love the 21 days of prayer and fasting that we do in January. But that shouldn't just be a January thing. You know, for every time I've had a major decision to make, I've done my best to fast mm -hmm. and pray because I'm trying to crucify my fleshy, carnal perspectives mm -hmm. so I can be sensitive to the spirit of God. And so I want to build my spirit. I want to starve my flesh. Number four would be stay humble at all costs. If you want to embrace the call, you got to stay humble. And so sometimes we feel like we got this. And whenever we feel like we got this, we really don't. Yeah. Okay. Because I think pride prevents us from living on call because we want to be in control. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things about obeying the call of God is that you have to be willing to 
surrender control. Mm. You have to say, God, I don't control my life any longer. You do. Absolutely. And number five, if you want to embrace the call, you got to give God an undeniable yes in advance. An undeniable yes mm. in advance. I think so many people, they haven't really <clears throat> thought about what if God does call you to another city? What if God does call you out of marketplace into ministry? What if God does call you to give that $100,000 that's in the bank? You haven't made up your mind in advance that you would give God an undeniable yes. Mm. And so because you haven't preset yourself to whatever he calls you to do to say yes to, then you're on the you're on the fence concerning mm -hmm. your obedience to what he's calling you yeah. to do. And I think that there is a preset that you got to say, God, whatever you call me to do, I'll say yes to no matter how hard it might seem, no matter what I have to give up or what I have to sacrifice. God, I give you an <laughs> undeniable yes. I think that's the reason why some people don't ask God, mm -hmm. what, are you, what do you want me to do? Because they don't want to do, yeah. they don't want to hear, mm. they're afraid to hear what God says. Yeah. And I love that predetermined yes. Uh -huh. I think it's perfectly okay. There are some things that I ask God, yeah. and I'll t probably frequently, Lord, uh, whatever you say, I'm going to do, just like Jesus in the garden. You yeah. know, if, if there's any other way, let me not do this. But nevertheless, right. let your will be done. Yeah. Like that's my predetermined, you know, answer to God. Yeah. Yes, whatever your, you know, whatever. Said, nevertheless, let your will be done. Yes, your servant is listening. Because we understand in advance, I've counted my cost, God. Yeah. No cost is greater than the cost that Jesus Christ already paid for yeah. me. Your word declares to me so many things that any obstacle that comes in my way that I can overcome it, that I can do all things through Christ yep. who strengthens me. So I understand that no matter how hard it is, in the end, I win. Yeah. So therefore, my answer is yes. Yeah. He makes all things work together for our good. So it doesn't matter what it looks like to us. We mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. that the end of it's going to be good. You know, I would say this because we look at ourselves as apostolic leaders and we look, I look at myself as a pastor of pastors and a leader for leaders. And um, we just love activating and equipping fivefold ministry Absolutely. gifts. And uh, we do have a thing here called the Alive Leadership Institute. If you mm -hmm. sense a call of God on your life into ministry leadership or you sense a call of God on your life into the fivefold ministry or something like that. I would love for you to check out the Alive Leadership Institute. We'll put some link in our show notes to that. Um, but it's just a two-year program that we have at Alive Church to really help develop the leadership call on your life. And it's not just for ministry leadership. It can also be from business leadership. But we really help develop your hands and your heart. We want you to have hands or the skill that can lead well. Mm -hmm. But we also want you to have the right heart. And David, the scripture says in Proverbs that he led with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of his hands. And that's really what our Leadership Institute is all about. And so we would love to help you have some training for the reigning. Amen. Well, we're out of time for today. And um, we're so glad that you joined us for today's podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. We would love for you to be the first to grab hold of the content. As soon as it's released, we release a new episode every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Of course, you can also catch it live, okay? But if you hit the subscribe button, you can be the first to be in the know. Um, if you enjoy our podcast, please let us know. Your reviews are blessing us. Your comments are blessing yes. us. It's blessing our team. Our desire is to continue week by week to give you life-changing and enhancing content that will help you grow closer to God and also closer to the people that God has placed in your life. And we have two things that you really might want to be a part of, and you'll see some of this in the show notes. Um, number one is we have the Better Marriage Boot Camp. Yes. Okay? And so all marriages takes investment. You know, a lot of people, they'll get married and they won't think about improving their marriage mm -hmm. after five years or 10 years. And it's on a gradual decline, but you're going to have to make some intentional pull into the filling Absolutely. station, get some service. You on need the, a refresh. <laughs> you need a refresh. And that's going to take an investment. If you want a better marriage, we have a 90 day boot camp where we want to be your online coaches. If you want more information about that, go to Ken and or you can check the link in your show notes as well. That's number one. Number two, Tabitha and I are celebrating 25 years of marriage this year on July the 3rd, and we are doing a 25th anniversary fundraising gala, okay? So we're celebrating 25 years of marriage. Yep. 
We're going to be renewing our vows. We're going to be releasing a new marriage book on this night. We're going to have dinner and dancing. It's going to be a black tie affair. If you are married, this is going to be a great date night for you. I don't even know if tickets are still available. You got to get them while supplies last. I will go get them right now. But all of the proceeds from this gala is going to go towards helping um, an organization uh, help minister to the people who are going through cancer mm -hmm. and minister to the people's families who have cancer. And so at the same time of celebrating 25 years of marriage, Tabitha is also going to be celebrating three years of yes. being cancer free, overcoming breast cancer. So we wanted to put it all together, throw a big party and also invite you guys to come and party with us. And so for more information about that, you can check out our website as well. All right. Sweetheart, anything in closing? Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. I hope that you were blessed by this. Yeah. I think God is doing something special in yeah. you. Yeah, we honor you, we cherish you, and we love you. And until the next time, remember, when you get better, the marriage gets better. Peace. Peace.